How's it going guys? I'm Robert from Machado Visuals and I want to do a quick breakdown of some content we recently shot for Area 15. For those that don't know, Area 15 is an event venue here in Vegas that offers a bunch of different art installations and experiences. And we were actually filming some content to promote one of their upcoming events called The Secret Garden. And here's a little bit of what we came up with. I teamed up with my good friend Leslie and the idea was that each look would have a specific elemental theme that our talent would portray. For camera, we used the Mini LF and shot 4.5K up and gate with the Tokina Vista Primes. Since we were just handing off footage, we weren't sure what the exact deliverables were. So up and gate gave us the full height of the sensor, which is about a three to two aspect ratio. So whoever is editing could have different options for social and traditional framing. I rated at 1280 ISO to help our focus pull a little bit and shoot everything at a minimum of T4. There wasn't really a need for a shallow depth of field. And even at a T4 on large format, you're looking pretty similar to a 2.8 Super 35 equivalent. At 1280, the image still looks pristine with a really fine noise pattern. I knew that we'd be switching back and forth between handheld and Steadicam, so I prepped the camera with that in mind. Our Steadicam op, Logan, had his own stabilizer plate that worked with his sled, so all we needed to do in between setups was to remove the EVF, which was super easy because of the new Co-Express cable that you can just unplug whenever you're on Steadicam. And we still had full control over the camera and playback using the function user buttons, which is super helpful whenever you're running the camera without a monitor. I mounted the power box to the top of the RIB to shorten up the camera, which was super helpful since some of the scenes were in pretty tight spaces so that I'm not just banging the battery against the wall when the camera's on my shoulder. All right, so I wanna break down a few of the lighting setups. And our first setup was a really simple shot where talent runs through these hedges and reveals a key. This was one of our visual references from the deck and our element theme was magic. I think the idea was that our character is holding the key to the secret garden that encompasses all of the scenes in this video. We set up these really massive hedges so that we could make it look like some sort of hedge maze. And I wanted a cool, soft ambient from overhead. So I ended up making a little speed rail bridge so that we could hang four Asteras overhead with honey crates. I put down a few bags to hold the speed rail in place and also added safety cables to the Cardellinis. The Asteras were perfect for this because they were super low profile since we were hanging directly from the top of the hedges and they gave us a really nice overhead glow that was soft and controlled. Any other fixture would have been either too big or too heavy, so the Titan tubes were perfect for this. We also added a bare sky panel as a warm, sharp edge and once we blocked out the action, I made my own little lighting cue on the Astera app to turn one of the Titans into a warm key as Talent hits her mark. Now, I'll be honest, I love using Asteras, but their app is mildly infuriating at best. It's a decent way to quickly control multiple fixtures, but getting there is sort of like using a pencil with a really shitty eraser. So when you start erasing, it just starts smearing everything everywhere. But needless to say, it's not my favorite, but it is my best option when I don't have my own gaffer with their own lighting console. Our next location was this dark forest area where we knocked out a few different looks. One of them was this phoenix look, so we set up this huge birdcage and had our talent give us a bunch of looks to camera. Lighting was actually pretty simple on this one. I just laid two Asteras on top of the cage and another two on the floor to give a deep red wash. We did play around with the fog machine for a few takes to simulate smoke as if the phoenix were just being reborn, but it was pretty difficult maintaining consistent levels of atmosphere since it was pretty much an industrial fogger as opposed to a hazer. Fog has a much thicker consistency and dissipates really quickly, while haze is much more fine and ends up lingering for a lot longer. We also did another earthy look here with Savannah as our fawn, and our key was just a 300D with a light dome and egg crate at a little bit of a higher angle. I set the camera to 4300 Kelvin to push our lights a little cooler and keep that moodier atmosphere. During our scout, we noticed these really big tree cutouts scattered across the floor, so I knew that would be a really great starting point to rig from on the day. I ended up clamping a handful of titans to the top of the tree so that it would end up illuminating the one directly behind it. 
I didn't want to just throw up a tube on every single tree because that would just end up blowing up our entire background. This way we were able to play with silhouetting specific branches and maintaining contrast as well as detail in the background. The last setup I want to talk about in this video was our glitter look and the element we were showcasing was water. But really quick, I want to get nerdy and talk about color. For this setup, Leslie mentioned that she wanted a pinkish magenta key to complement the analogous makeup palette. All right, no problem. We have a sky panel. We can just pick whatever color we want, right? But therein lies the problem. As we set up our shot and started rolling, I noticed something seemed off. The colors were super dull and didn't have the vibrance that I remember seeing with my eyes, and that's because when you use a limited wavelength of light, the light reflected back into the camera will more or less be the same color, just with a slightly different density. That's why our first take looks pretty monochromatic and more mystique than mystic. The magenta side of our talent's face still looks magenta, but the cyan is more of a deeper blue because it ends up absorbing a lot of the magenta light. Ultimately, this was a really easy fix. We just set the sky panel to a regular white light and it instantly gave more life and tonality to the shot and was much more aligned with our makeup artist's intent. So moral of the story, and this is what I always preach, just because you can doesn't mean you should. RGB lights make it super easy to just pick any color that you wanna use, but that convenience comes at a cost. Usually whatever color you end up picking will have a super limited spectral fingerprint that will literally be reflected from whatever you're putting in front of the camera. That's why I'm still a big fan of gelling lights, even if they're RGB. I'd rather start with a full spectrum white light and take the time to mess around with gels rather than using a single wavelength to produce a washed out color. But that's another story for another time. Hopefully this video was helpful in some way. This shoot was a ton of fun and it was a really nice change of pace after like three weeks of shooting back to back. It's always super fun collaborating with Leslie and also meeting a bunch of new creatives. Shout out to Caitlin and Kate for slaying these looks and also to the homies that came out to help on this one. If you wanna see more behind the scenes content from this shoot, I'm throwing up a bunch of extra videos over on my Patreon as well as other exclusive content from my professional life. I've also started selling these neat little stickers that you can slap on your cart or water bottle and you can find these right below the description. If you leave a comment down below with hashtag is that a red, I'll send some out to a random winner. Otherwise, if you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comments below. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.